Man, this is Tyler Anderson, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. That's your nigga push battle, shouldn't be no favor for a favor. Stand on business, leave no witness. Told them members they're verbatim, word for word. All right, today we got Tyler Anderson off the porch with us today. Man, I'm glad to be here, glad to be jumping off the porch, happy to be in the A, ready to get this thing underway. Okay, for sure. My boy yeah. came through with a bar in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you And I don't even rap, man. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm, I'm seriously glad to be here and uh, just ready to add value and, uh, you know, make it happen. For sure, man. Yeah. We, have a, we appreciate you out the porch with us today, man. Absolutely. So tell me where you from? Man, I'm from Florida, you know, born and raised in Florida, uh, Central Florida to be specific. And uh, I guess I'll rep, you know, my, my city, Sanford, Florida. And, uh, you know, we got couple Walmarts, a mall, it ain't really bought nothing, you know, the mall, but we got one. <laughs> and uh, and so, good little city, and uh, but definitely FLA. That's real, that's yeah. what's up. So what you out here working on while you in Atlanta? Man, well, I actually have an office here in Atlanta, and um, they're in Buckhead, Buckhead Village. And um, so we do some uh, financing projects, we do some development projects. And uh, so when I'm in the A, I hang out with the family and uh, all my siblings and parents, they're here. And uh, I just come here to work, do a little shopping. You know, you got to shop when you're in the A. You cannot come and not hit up Phipps or Lennox or somewhere and uh, get the shopping in. Where I live is in North Florida, right? Ain't no shopping up there. Yeah. But I come up here and make it happen. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. So how would you describe your childhood coming up in Florida? Man, I had a, uh, I had a very, I had a good childhood, you know. I was raised, you know, my siblings and I were raised by my mom, you know, my stepdad, he was there, but kind of in and out. Uh, my biological father uh, was killed at work when I was three, eight months old or something like that. And uh, so, but my mom and my grandparents made sure I had everything I wanted, everything I needed. And uh, so I had a really good childhood, man. And, uh, and uh, I only have good memories. That's what's up. Yeah. That's real. So how would you say you got your start in the business world of real estate? Well, you know, I, I'd have to go, I guess, back to my childhood. Like, I was raised by my mom and, uh, you know, my great uh, grandparents, who's, uh, they're all gone on to be you know, with the Lord now, and I, you know, I got my, I got them inked on me, you know, Annie and Abner and Annie Jackson, you know, they raised me, but they raised me in church, right, and so all I knew, you know, I was just a church boy, man, everybody else was outside playing, you know, hanging out for the summer, what have you, I was going to the church convention, you know, put up in a hotel room until church started, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but I fell in love with, I don't know, I can't say business, I fell in love with systems and processes, you feel me? And because that's, that's really what church is, you know? It's a system, you know, and it's a hierarchy. And uh, so I got involved in real estate, you know, just from that, that reality early on in life, falling in love with systems and processes, and I realized that business was the same thing, you feel me? And uh, I, had a, I had a knack and a desire for seeing things built, seeing things develop, uh, uh, but more specifically, knowing that it costs money in order to make it happen. And uh, I, you know, I just fell in love with the whole idea of all that. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. I also read that you dropped out in just the 10th grade. Yeah, yeah. So how hard was that decision to be made? Uh, it wasn't real hard because I was, because I was raised by older people and, uh, you know, my mom, she was, uh, she never let just my grandparents just raise me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a room both places, you feel me? Um, but she just, because I was raised in such a mature fashion, like going to high school, getting up, you know, my sister, she with me yellow, and uh, I would be supposed to get up early in the morning for school and I'd come up with an excuse 
like, you know, my back hurt or my stomach or something, like I'm almost dead, like suck, you know, like I don't want to go, you feel me? And uh, it was really like, I just didn't want to go be a part, like everybody enjoyed me being around because I was going to say something that was going to make everybody laugh, you know, I was going to do something, but I got to a point to where I didn't want to be around childish acting, pediatric acting people, and they was all at school. So my mind was already on how I'm going to get this bag. You see what I'm saying? And if I'm sitting in a biology class or algebra class, hell, they ain't telling me how to get no money. Okay. That counting that I'm doing in mathematics or that counting that I'm doing in algebra or what is it, calculus or whatever it is, man, I don't want to do all that. I want to count money. So I was bored. So when it came to dropping out, you know, I dropped out in the 10th grade. Um, and, but I, w I did go back and get a GED. And I made the decision. Well, first, I went to the adult high school. And all of them same people were still there. So I said, no, 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 no. So I said, I asked the advisor, listen, if I get a GED, can I go to college? She said, yes. And I opted in to get a GED and went on to school. That's what's up. Yeah. No, that's real. Yeah. So once you got your GED, right, what college did you decide to go to? Gupton Jones uh, College of Mortuary Science in Decatur, Georgia. Okay. Right here in the A. For real? Yeah, I wanted to be a funeral director. <laughs> hey, man. Every day. Huh? Okay. Dying to get in For sure. or get out, either one. For sure. Yeah. So, when would you say you jumped off the porch? Because you migrated from Florida to Georgia. So, tell us, when did you say you jumped off the porch? Two years ago. <laughs> man, gone. No, I'm serious, man. Two years ago. I came to Georgia for school. I left a year prior to finishing. I did not finish because, again, here I am trying to get at that bag, you know? I was about to get married. I wanted to be able to provide for my wife. And uh, uh, we left here, went back to Florida. I took a job in, at a funeral home that had never hired an African-American in 102 years of existence. Shit. I was the first African-American that they hired. And they hired me to help develop, you know, help get them into a market and demographic that they hadn't served. Took that job fell in love with the business aspect of funeral service. Not the services, mm. you know, going to the cemetery or picking up, you know, the seating up, going to the funeral, casket, flout, none of that. The business side of it. And the business side of it was that check. Mm. Where I had been accustomed to seeing, you know, maybe five, six, seven thousand dollar funeral in our culture. Now I'm dealing with all Caucasians and they doing fifteen and twenty thousand dollar services and they ain't doing no damn GoFundMe's. They ain't doing that. They're doing what's called pre planning and if they didn't pre plan, they're saying, Do you take American Express? Can we write a check? And so that was different for me and I fell in love with it. I was like, bingo this is it. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say was the first hustle, right? The first hustle of yours that got you introduced to getting a bag? My first hustle, like, at a level of actually making money getting a bag? Yeah. My granddad died. And because I had been in funeral service school, worked in a funeral home, my granddad died, and that almost killed me. And, uh, man, we went to the funeral home to make all the arrangements, and the casket that I wanted, they were charging 12 grand for it. And I knew that casket did not cost 12 grand. I knew that's what they were charging, but it didn't cost that. So I went to the source of where they got caskets from, and when I went there, I found it, and we paid $2,500 mm. 
for, for a twelve thousand dollar castle. Same shit. Mm. But then I went deeper, and I knew that where I got it for twenty five hundred from, they had to get it for at least eight or nine hundred. So that meant I had to go overseas. Mm. I made the connection, started importing caskets from overseas and taking those same caskets that I was buying for three and four hundred dollars. And I didn't go sell to the funeral directors. I started selling to the general public, put an ad in the paper, 65 percent less than funeral homes, low cost casket gallery with a 1-800 number, 24 hours, 365, call me. I'm going to beat their price 65% or 50% or better, and I'm going I'm to get that back. So bringing a solution to what was really a problem, and that's what, hell, that's what business is. Fact. Business is a problem that is met with a solution, and the result is revenue. That's business. That's real. So what was the next one? So after we found out how to import caskets, what were we moving on to after that? Because business had to be booming. It was. It was booming. But then, you know, they found a way to price me out of business. I was going to say, what's next? Yeah. And, and so what was next was I fell, because I fell in love with the business aspect of that industry, then I said, well, I'm going to open up a, cap, a uh, insurance agency. And I'm going to just write pre-need funeral policies that give people the ability to pay monthly for their funeral before they die and should something happen to them you feel me like before they die then it's going to pay itself off because it's funded through insurance so i opened up an insurance agency and uh ran it up and got a bag yeah. That was up. Yeah. So how do we get into real estate? So because I ran it up, I ain't run it up right. You're like, that's a perfect question. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like, that's a perfect question. Like, I ran it up. I had some good business, but then I had some bad business. And the bad business was me thinking that, you know, like, I was so, so smart and this and that. Like, I made up, you feel me, like, people's names, numbers, birthdays, socials and wrote policies on fake people. You know, like, I ain't bother nobody. Like, personal information. Like, identity theft, all that. I ain't do nothing. I made people up. But when I made them up, I made them live at my office or my, ho or my house. So I put the address of my office or my house on the policy, which was the dumbest thing yeah. I could have ever did. <laughs> but I wrote... I wrote these policies and I made like 89 grand, you know, like, yeah, like 90 bands in, you know, a couple of weeks or something like that. And uh, I wasn't really counting it because, you know, I was just having it. Yeah, this was, this was back in 13, 14, you know what I'm saying? And uh, got, got popped and, uh, you know, could have ended up in prison for like 30 years. God literally graced me through that, you know, no convictions. No, not a convicted felon, no none of that. I had some probation, restitution, stuff like that. Cause like when you mess up, you can't just feel like, oh, uh, you just gonna get out of it without nothing. Like you gonna have to deal with what you've done. Yeah. You feel me? Like, and I feel like that's a good lesson for even like our generation, man. Like you, you can't just do shit. And then, you know, well, I'm gonna go to God and pray and then he gonna make it go away. No, there's still, you're still going to have to deal with some of the penalty of what you've done. You know, he'll make it a little easier for you to carry and deal with, but you're going to have to deal with it. So, did that, and um, I had to shut my agency down, and, uh, well, it got shut down, and uh, I went for several years, because I had to relinquish my license and all this, I went for several years like, man, how am I going to make a living? Because I'm not doing caskets. I didn't, funeral, I didn't finish funeral service school. You feel me? Now I don't have my insurance license. You know, I grew up in church, so I was a preacher. I was a little preacher, you know, at, at that time. And uh, I started preaching at 16. But when I'm going through all this legal stuff, I had actually been pastoring. And so now these church people 
and these pastors and preachers, now they dragging me. Because for real, they was jealous anyway. Right. Because I was so young and in my bag. Yeah. You feel me? And had a lifestyle that they couldn't understand how I was doing it. Because mm -hmm. they've been in this thing 30, 40, 50 years and, and, and still catching rides. You <laughs> Let's see? Let's talk about it. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, I had to, they was dragging me. So, like, what am I going to do? I went three years. Nobody calling my name. Nobody giving me opportunities. Not doing no business. Nothing. Three years, bro. And one day I said, I heard a uh, commercial that talked about investing in real estate with no risk, not using your money, using other people's money. OPM. But being able to make maybe like three to five thousand. And that was big money at the time. So I called the number and they told me about it. And because I'm a researcher, I went dived in a little deeper. I invested into whatever little program it was. I dug deeper and I started wholesaling real estate, right? I started getting properties under contract, right? And then selling my interests into that particular transaction, making three to five grand. And that's how I started coming back. Mm. So yeah. would you say that was a turning point for you? Because I know you ain't just stopped there. No, I mean, I feel like the turning point was really when I started making a little money, then I started getting back into, um, I figured out I wanted to get a job because I wanted consistent income. Started working for this uh, business consulting firm, had 30,000 clients. And working for them, I figured out, I found out what all I did not know. Like it was a lot that I didn't know about business. Went back to school, Rollins College, pursuing an MBA. You know, I finish up there. And uh, after I'm done matriculating through that system, I said, well, shit, I got to find a way to pay for this. So I started working for a finance company that was only financing, guess what? Um, Churches. Mm. So now I'm presented with an opportunity to serve the same demographic of people who drug me when I ain't have nothing. Mm. So now these same clowns, I'm so, these same saints. Saints. There you go. <laughs> That's the better word. Saints. These same clownish saints <laughs> call me and want money that I got access to. You feel me? But you held me out to dry. But you hung me out to dry. Drug me when I dry. I and then ran over me. Mm. Huh? Yeah, it's somewhere in there. It's somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere in there. You know, but and, and there is a verse that says, "Judge not, lest you be judged." Mm. But when I was presented with that opportunity, I couldn't let the hurt that I experienced make me uh, withdraw from an opportunity to serve them, which really was going to help me get in my bag even more. Yeah. So when they came to me and they needed stuff, you know, my response had to be, "Sure, I'll serve you, not a problem." And I helped a lot of churches. Mm. helped a lot of pastors and got in that bag for real mm. and so because I was from, in real estate from a financial perspective it still kept me in that industry but at that time the turning point was when I figured out that well that company initially told me they couldn't hire me because of my background because of what I had went through mm -hmm. so they said we can't hire you you can't use our brand but you can refer deals to us. I said, okay, if I refer a deal, can I still make the money that I want to make? They said, yeah. I said, perfect. I started blowing up the president phone of that company so much with deals and pastors. A month later, he came back and he sent me an email. And guess what the title was? We need you. I've been thinking. <laughs> what have you been thinking about? <laughs> he said, I've been thinking. And I've been thinking about, although you got a you know, little flaw in your background, you weren't convicted and nothing like that. You know, I said you couldn't use our brand, but we need you to use our brand. 
And we're going to send you to all the little church conventions and conferences. We're going to pay for it, fly you out, this and that. And uh, they did all that. I messed up and signed the agreement. And i tell you why I messed up. Because once I signed it and I started doing deals, you know, I remember the first deal I did was 1.5 mil. Mm. Pastor came to me and said, man, we finna lose everything in 90 days. I've been working with this independent guy. He don't know what he's doing. I need 1.5. My church, apartments, and everything is tied into this deal. I ain't have no money, but I had access to it. Mm. So it don't take money to make money. That's BS. Mm. I got his information on a napkin. I sent the information in, sent him an application. He filled it out, sent it back, all, got all the documents to me. We closed his deal in 78 days, 1.5 million. I made almost 20 bands on that deal. Mm. But guess how much I got paid? How much? 10. Why is that? Because the company I was working for that wouldn't hire me, that said I couldn't use their brand. They took a bigger percentage. They took 50 plus percent of my money mm. because they had been, they sent me to the conference. I'm like, I thought y'all said y'all was just going. So I figured at that time, I got to turn the switch. And that was the flip. That was the changing point. Mm. I left that company mm -hmm. and said i'm doing the traveling i'm using my phone my energy my resources my time away from my wife and kid at the time i could do this for myself charge less money but make more and because they didn't want me to use their brand anyway and i still had major motion without using their brand that lets me know I'm the damn brain. Yeah. I'm the solution. And when I figured that out, shit turned. Mm. And it's been up and stuck ever That's since. Real. That's what's up. Yeah. That's a hell of a story though. Yeah. So after you realize you are the motherfucking catch, right? Yeah. What are we doing now? What's the first thing we doing to make sure me, the brand, is gonna be solidified? Well, you know, everybody want to develop logos and all that kind of stuff. I ain't care nothing about none of that. I needed you to be able to eat, get in contact with me. Face card. Yeah. So I ain't have no money really to pay no graphic designers and all that. So I got on Pick Collage or whatever it's called. I mean, this was back in 18. It just turned for me at 18. And uh, made all my own little flyers, started sending them out. I go meet with pastors and churches, man, 9, 10 o'clock at night. You know, I was doing the stuff the big banks wouldn't do. And because I had access to the money, you know, I was just making the deals happen. And uh, I started being able to run up, a, run up a check. And now this lifestyle that I had to let go of, um, because I was, when I was doing it wrong, now I got it back. Mm. But now the same clown saints, I mean, <laughs> clownish saints that I was helping now, they starting to frown like, well, what is he doing? Oh, he must be, he Back must be here. doing fraud again. Mm. No, I ain't doing no fraud. You know, I ain't doing no fraud. You know, I ain't doing no fraud no more. I'm just, I'm just in my damn bag and fabulous. That's what it is. You feel me? Period. <laughs> So, how do you feel knowing that you can make the same lucrative income legally that you were making illegally? Man, I, actually, that's not a true statement. The truth of it is, I make more money legally than I could illegally. Mm. Because the time that I can put into, and the energy that I can put into doing this legally, when I was doing it illegally, I had to spend the balance of that time watching my sh over my shoulders and trying to be sure I had all my stuff together. But I could take all that time and put it into doing it the right way. And I tell, I tell people, man, like, we can, so we're still in the insurance and we're still in real estate. But the two opportunities that I have for people, like, I can really show you how to get a bag for real you know, the right way, because I, 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 I know how to do it the wrong way. 
Facts. Yeah, so I mean, the way that I feel about it, I feel amazing because now it's not all selfish. When I was doing it illegally, it was like all about all, all I could get. Now it's about what I can empower other people to get and what I can empower other people to do. And, you know, that makes me, that's what makes me, uh, to be able to show people how to go take their life to the next level, that's when I started coining the term, when I coined the term, Mr. Next Level. Hey. So who is Mr. Next Level for the people who don't know? Mr. Next Level is that guy who can show you how to get involved in real estate or the financial services industry or whatever you're doing, help you next level, 10x what you're doing and next level your life, take your bag and your money to the next level. Mm. If you next level your life or if you next level your money, you'll next level your life. The issue that we have is people trying to next level their life and capping for Facebook and Instagram and social media and you know just putting on a show. But if you follow them home or if you follow them to that business, they ain't doing shit. Mm. Not for real. Because if they were, perhaps they wouldn't even have time to be, do, be doing all this posting and capping and all this. Now, I post a lot, or there's a lot of posting that happens on my page, but I don't do it because I missed the next level. Yeah. I got people to do that, you see? And so, but that's, that's who he is. He shows you how to take your business, your brand, your life, and whatever you're doing, and next level. And if you don't have something that you're doing, give you an opportunity to tap into what we're doing legally and show you how to make at least half an M a year. Mm. So what's some advice you're giving a young brother, right? Coming to you right now, he don't have nothing, but he want to change his life. What's the first thing you're going to tell him to do? Get your mind right. Change your mind. Oftentimes, you know, we don't reach a level of success because mentally you really haven't made, you haven't really figured out that whatever you want and desire, you deserve it. So first get your mind right because wealth is really a mentality. You know, I would tell a young brother or sister who ain't got, uh, who ain't got nothing, like get your mind right and stop running after riches, stop running after uh, money because wealth, my mom taught us this and my sister, she can attest to this, that money is not pursued, it's attracted. Mm. You can't pursue enough. I can't, I can't, I don't have enough time in the day to pursue all the damn money and wealth that I need in order to live. Not what I said need. It's attractive. Money follows attention. If you doing enough, what we call, I learned this term, my dude, shooter for real, <laughs> and he, 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 uh, literally sat in the conference room one day. Shoot, shoot, introduce yourself. See, he all, he, he cool, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> shooter for real, he just dropped a major, he, you just dropped something with, um. Yeah, 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 new single out right now, man. Fuck you all night with Tokyo All right. Yeah, see, see, I'm a, I'm a preacher, but I identify with industry artists and stuff like that because I'm not offended by diversity. You see what I'm saying? Uh, he sat in my conference room and he said, we need you. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, what is he talking about? And he's like, we need somebody who understands business but who can also speak on our level to break this monotony down and break this stuff down into layman terms where we can understand it. When I was a pastor and preaching, my sister used to love to come and hear me preach because she said, the way that you break stuff down, like we can understand it. And this, this, y'all introduce yourself. Y'all, it's Yellow Baby, and you can follow me on IGA, Yellow Baby, Y-E-L-L-O-W, I used to go look at my brother preach because every time he would preach, I've been so many different churches. Don't get me wrong, I love, you know, church period because I love what my brother would preach. It's always like, 
Okay, so yeah, that's what they were trying to say. He'll break it down to the point. He's not even trying to break it down. He just says it to where you understand. It's not hard to understand. So, and let me touch on my phone real quick. Yeah, he used to um, tell my parents or my mom, tell my mom, I don't feel like going to school. I'm in pain. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, I'm cool. So I have to go in there and be like, Mom, I'm tired of this. Don't worry about it. And she didn't, because it's the golden child. But I feel like she, but you going off script, though. Like, she could. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yellow Denise, everybody clap it up. Thank yeah. you, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, still tell it. Still tell it. Still. Yeah, yeah. Dang. <laughs> What was the question? Shit, I forgot too. <laughs> ah, we forgot. But we off the porch. For sure. You know that. We off the, it's unscripted. For sure. Like, this is my life. Like, you know, I, I just tell people, man, get your mind right. You know? Like, it's mental. And when, when I, man, look, I can go back through my phone. And I used to take pictures of cars sitting in traffic or on Google or something like that, you know, like screenshots and say the picture. Just about everything I've taken a picture of, I've been able to obtain. Mm. I don't work for nobody. I work, well, I work for my clients, but I don't clock in on nobody's job. Now, there's nothing, about, there's nothing wrong with clocking in, right? But I'm saying for me, I tell, if you do a mental hack, and really figure out what you want out of life and what you want to do. And you realize, you got to realize, ain't nobody going to come do that shit for you. It's in my book. I, I dropped a book like two years ago. It's on Amazon. It's called You Have What It Takes. It shares my story and then it got some actionable steps on the end, self-care, self-forgiveness, self-empowerment. Like go on Amazon, type in Tyler Anderson, You Have What It Takes, grab the book. and but the subtitle is discovering purpose, passion, and productivity. When you do a mental hack and discover your purpose, because oftentimes we talk, go after your passion. I don't care what you, what you passionate about. If that ain't your purpose, the shit ain't gonna work. Mm. I was always passionate about preaching, pastoring this huge church with all these thousands of people in there. And perhaps God might have that for me at some point. But right now, my purpose is to empower those who other people have cast aside like they did me. See, my purpose came out of a place of pain and because I don't mind going back and looking at that pain in the face, I can help somebody else. Every scammer, every dope boy, every street person, every hoe, prostitute, stripper, uh, whatever, every person that's been cast to the side that society kind of frowns on that they don't I'm called to those people to help empower them to say when you discover your purpose you'll define you'll discover passion in that and from that you get productivity which is what brings profits mm. next level what the hell you doing Money follows attention. Get so much attention until you get criticized for it. She always talking about wig. She always talking about hat. She always talking about eyelashes. Don't nobody want to hear that shit. Get so much attention until when they think wigs and eyelashes and all that, they calling you. <laughs> she always posting pictures of her body. She ain't nothing but a stripper. Go strip. Do that. Take them same singles when you build up enough and become a real estate investor, I'm gonna show you how to get 90% of that property finance, only put 10% down, get you 100% of the rehab cost, flip that, and get that bag. Get off that pole and start building some shit with huge columns in it. That's who I'm called to. That dope boy that's been out there all these years hustling, really throwing rocks at the penitentiary, he might be making some money, but not what he could be. He really smarter than that. Let me show you how to take them 200 grand, buy you a, a, a building, 
commercial building that's two, three million, rent out all the office spaces in there and make you 150, 200 grand a month, legally. That's who I'm called to. So it might not be the standard, you know, praise and worship, call to worship, offering time, song, offering time, song, shout, offering time, all these damn offering times, and we making people give to somebody that they've never met, God, somebody that we have been doing a horrible job representing, right? I mean, if, if God is so forgiving and loving, but we're, as church people, saints, clown is saints, so judgmental and unforgiving, you're doing a horrible job at representing who you say you serve. Mm. And you ought to be sued for false advertisements. <laughs> Misrepresentation. <laughs> you ever been at a traffic light and saw the church people out there with bag, uh, 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 buckets talking about give or buy water? Come on, man. That's a horrible freaking representation of somebody who's supposed to be rich. All that. All that. But if we really teach people how to get in their bag based on their purpose, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they're going to find passion, they're going to find productivity, and they're going to get profit and next level their freaking life. For sure. Now, if that ain't preaching, I don't know what it is. Facts. Yeah, I was say you popping for show, man. Feel me like like literally to come on the street and next level your life. We want y'all to turn around and make something of yourself legally. Your mama be proud, generational wealth. We're talking about your children, children becoming somebody off of what you planted. I'm talking about I'm talking about even if they don't have insurance experience, you don't need that. Man, I just took a 21 year old. We've done it multiple times. 21 year old I met, who met me at the barbershop. He was enamored by my watch and my, and my car. I was driving the double R that day. And he like, what does he do with a two-tone double R on 24s? <laughs> he got a poppy. <laughs> <laughs> two-tone. Right, you know what I'm two, saying? Two-tone. Two you don't know that's a Rolls Royce. Yeah. Two-tone double R, ghost. Yeah. Old foes. Okay. <laughs> with red carpet. And it had to be red carpet because I said uh, I was going to wear red bottoms all year. Oh, okay. <laughs> she, my sister got me out of I used to think dressing down was jeans, a pair of hard bottoms, and a button down shirt with my collar open. Yeah. So she had to tell me, you know, you young. You got to pop your shit. Yeah. So because Shooter told me <laughs> put that shit on. Because Shooter told me. <laughs> In, in our generation, if they don't see it, then what? They don't believe it. It ain't happening. Yeah. Listen, I ain't going to tell you that. That's all he said. If you don't see it, it never happens. It don't exist. It don't exist. So, I, didn't, I don't just wear red bottles. You know, like I started buying. Y'all can't see. He got the Pradas on today, though. Pradas, <laughs> yes. Montclair, you know, Giuseppe's. Okay. Uh, 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 what else? Yeah, Versace. Okay. Uh, Gucci, huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, and now, now I wear my own brand, you know, normalized black luxury. You know, this merch, you can, you can, you can, you can follow me on IG, you know, and, and, but I'm, I'm able to show people what a real poster child of redemption, comeback, overcoming, against all odds. Man, I got some people that still don't like me. And I had somebody call me just yesterday and say, man, such and such told me, we was at our family house, such and such told me, you didn't put a headstone down for my cousin and, and, and you stole money from, from them. I said, what? First of all, I ain't had that, that business been closed five years ago. And their they ass never paid me nothing. They know who paid me, 
and who paid me, I offered them a refund two years ago, and they told me don't worry about it because business is closed all the time. I still got people who judge me based on stuff that they had nothing really to do with the money transaction of it. They were just offended, and offense is a choice. Mm -hmm. So my purpose is to show people how to take situations where you have wronged or offended people, go and get that right. And I told them, I said, have them call me, and if they want a refund five or six years later, I give it to them. Because I don't want them losing that kind of sleep and going to hell, or living in hell right now, because they seeing me all over the place popping my shit, and they worry about fifteen dollars. <laughs> because I'm gonna do that. For sure. Yeah. It's like that. It's like that. For sure, man. Yeah. Tyler Anderson, we appreciate having you on the porch with us today, gang. Man, I'm glad to come. I'm glad to have been here, and uh, it's an honor. You know, this this is this this is major. Yeah. You know, and so y'all will be seeing a whole lot more from me, a lot more from Yellow, a lot more from Shooter. You know, I got my dude, my OG Tito, with me. Now, I didn't tell you about this. Mm. Next level management. Oh, okay. We got so, some artists on the roster. I'm, I kind of, I'm kind of getting in that way, you know, and uh, I have some industry connections based on financing people and stuff like. That. I don't do no name drops, but I got connections where I can help artists to uh, get on and uh, create. Man, huh? That shit. Listen, <laughs> man, listen. Next be level. Real humble, but I'm gonna be real with y'all. Mm. If y'all got motion, because that's all we about. If y'all got motion, y'all tap in. We gonna make sure y'all do it. You feel me? If you got your own motion, though, remember that. We can't make motion for you, but we can finance your motion. Get your motion, cause she is, we keep you afloat. And that's it, brother. Next level vibes. Boom! Gang. <laughs> <laughs> that's your nigga push battle. Shouldn't be no favor for a favor. Stand on business, leave no witness. Told them members, they're verbatim, word for word. Feel like we trapped, we in a trap, we on bro.